Pope John Paul I, the smiling Pope as he was known, was born Albino Luciani on October 17, 1912, near Belluno, Italy. His working class family was poor due to the erratic employment of his socialist father. A sermon by a Capuchin friar first turned young Albino's thoughts toward the priesthood. For a time, he considered becoming a Capuchin himself. However, it was to the junior seminary of the, Bell, of the Belluno Diocese at Feltre that the 11-year-old went in 1923. He became an ordained priest on July 7, 1935 in St. Peter's Church, Belluno. After ordination into the priesthood, Luciani moved to Rome where he studied at the Gregorian University and obtained a doctor in theology. Luciani was made bishop in 1958 and became Patriarch of Venice in 1969. When Pope Paul VI died in 1978, Luciani was elected Pope on the second day of the conclave. At every level, Luciani was noted for his simplicity and his zeal for social justice. He wanted the church's wealth reduced and shared with the poor at home and abroad. Mother Teresa said that Luciani, quote, has been the greatest gift of God, a sunray of God's love shining in the darkness of the world. Pope John Paul I, as the spiritual leader of all the Roman Catholics, was embarking on a revolution. He wanted to set the church in a new direction that would be considered highly undesirable and dangerous by many high-ranking church officials. He was on the verge of reversing the church's position on artificial birth control, as well as cleaning up the messy Vatican Bank scandal. Cardinal Basil Hume dubbed L Luciani as, quote, God's candidate. But on September 28, 1978, God's candidate was found dead. Pope John Paul I's papacy lasted only 33 days. It was one of the shortest reigns in papal history. The official cause of the death was a heart attack, but there was a great deal of confusion in the details of his sudden death, and many were crying murder. As several conspiracies unfolded around the death of Pope John Paul I, many people wondered what, in fact, had happened to the beloved Pope John Paul I. The most prominent conspiracy theory for the death of Pope John Paul I begins with the Vatican Bank scandal. The Vatican Bank was personally owned and operated by the Pope and made loans to religious projects all over the world. It was discovered that the bank exploited its high status and engaged in risky speculation and illegal schemes, including money laundering. This drove the Pope to create a list of dismissals and position reassignments within the bank. These series of dismissals and new appointments was a large motive for the Pope's murder. It was abundantly clear that on September 28, 1978, the men of the Vatican Bank had much to fear if the papacy of John Paul I continued. It's equally clear that all of them stood to gain in a variety of ways if Pope John Paul I should suddenly die. And he did. Sometime during the late evening of September the 28th, 1978, and the early morning, of September the 29th, 1978, just 33 days after his election, Albano Luciani died. Many, including David Yallop, believe that the Pope was poisoned with digitalis, which would have made it appear that he died from a heart attack.
On Thursday, September 28th, the Pope sat down to dinner in his Vatican apartment with his two secretaries. It was a simple meal, clear soup, veal, fresh beans, and salad. The secretaries had a glass of wine each. The Pope drank only water. When it was over, the Pope watched a news program and soon after nine, retired for the night. The next morning, a nun named Sister Vincenza carried a flask of coffee to the Pope's study. She knocked on his bedroom door. However, there was no reply. She gingerly opened the door, only to find that the Pope was not awake. She rushed to his bed, felt his pulse. There was none. The wrist was icy cold. The Pope is dead! Panic-stricken, she rushed to wake Lorenzi and McGee, the Pope's secretaries. Other experts believe that the Pope died of natural causes. Luciani said her uncle may have suffered a thrombosis, meaning a clot that obstructs the flow of blood, since he had already experienced one such episode during a 1975 visit to Brazil that affected the retina in one eye. Interestingly, she rejected the idea floated by, Luz, by Lorenzi of a heart attack, insisting that had her uncle recently complained of chest pains, the nuns in his household who accompanied him to the Vatican from Venice would have called a doctor whether he wanted it. These natural cause supporters still believe that there is mystery. The actual cause of death will likely never be ascertained with certainty because no autopsy was performed in keeping with Vatican. There are many views as to how the Pope died. Why were so many suspicions aroused? First of all, Cardinal Velo, the Secretary of State, had behaved very strangely. He had instantly pocketed the bottle of pills that the Pope took for his low blood pressure together with the spectacles, slippers, and papers from his study desk. None of these were ever seen again. The Secretary of State had also ordered that the whole papal apartment, all 19 rooms of it, to be cleared of all John Paul I's possessions. By 6 that evening, there was no trace of the dead Pope anywhere to be seen. Then, Cardinal Velo called the papal morticians and embalmers before an autopsy could be performed. Go. Buongiorno. This is Cardinal Velot. The Pope's body needs to be embalmed. Immediately. No questions asked. <laughs> An entirely different theory is proposed by John Cornwell, who investigated the death for the Vatican. In his first press conference as John Paul I, John Paul Luigiani enthralled the world with his simplicity and humor. He announced his desire to be known not as pontiff, but as the pastor of the church. And he was dead the smiling pope. The Vatican expected me to prove that John Paul I had not been poisoned by one of their own. But the evidence led me to the conclusion that seems to be more shameful even, and more tragic, than any of the other conspiracy theories. John Paul I died scorned and neglected by the institution that existed to sustain him. There are many conspiracy theories regarding the death of Pope John Paul I, but will the truth ever be revealed. To the Italian press it was clear. The Vatican, for some reason, had lost its way. The Pope's death had admittedly come as a surprise. In short, there was plenty of motive for murder. There was plenty of opportunity for murder. There were plenty of suspicious circumstances surrounding the death of the Pope. And that's all we can say at this point because the mystery, in my opinion, remains.